Good morning, peoples, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship from my craft room. I'm very excited that the streaming uh, software is working for me this morning. So not only was I able to have some imagery of our stained glass windows, but I have a lay reader this morning who will be reading our scripture. This is very exciting. And if any of you might be willing uh, and able to record yourself uh, reading a scripture for another week, please let me know. I would love to include your voice. So I um, invite you to grab a candle of your own so that we can all um, do something together. Um, the worship resources, all of the hymns, readings, and prayers for today are linked um, in a page that's in the description of this video. And also on that page, there is a link to our virtual coffee hour following worship this morning. So I would invite you to join that. Even if you don't have a video camera, uh, there are directions to call in on a, a physical phone. Is this still the gesture for a telephone? It's not really what phones look like anymore, is it? It's just occurred to me. <laughs> Weird morning thoughts. So, beloved, let us love one another. We love because God first loved us. So I invite you to light your candle. As I light mine, I will say a blessing. I invite you to repeat each line of the blessing after I say it. God, I light this candle now. God, I light this candle now. It is a sign of your presence. It is a sign of your presence. You have drawn us together. You have drawn us together. Nothing separates us from your love. Nothing separates us from your love. Let us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So in the season of Easter, we use this time to offer our thanks to God instead of our usual confessions, because Christ has died for our sins and has risen to give us new life. Please join with me in a prayer of thanksgiving, and please add your own um, prayers of joy um, on your own. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you that your glory has dawned on us and brought us into this day of resurrection. We rejoice that the grave could not hold your son and that he has conquered death, risen to rule over all powers of this earth. We praise you that he summons us into new life to follow him with joy and gladness. By your spirit, lift us from doubt and despair and set our feet in Christ's holy way, that our lives may be signs of his life and all we have may show forth his love. Praise, glory, and thanksgiving to you, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, in this moment, we want to listen attentively to you. Send your spirit to silence the distractions within and without. Quiet any noise that beckons us away from your voice. Help us to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his living word. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes to us from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. 
and your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And this is the word of the Lord. So if you've just recently tuned in, all of the prayers, readings, and music for today's service is on our website and linked in the description of this video. So please join with me in singing our first hymn, Jesus, Lover of My Soul, which echoes the themes of the psalm that Bill just read. Jesus, Lover of My Soul let me to thy bosom fly while the nearer waters roll while the tempest still is high hind me O my saviour hide till the storm of life is past 
So uh, this week I was listening to the soundtrack of Hamilton, as one does, and since I had today's gospel reading on my mind, I happened to catch a reference to this gospel reading in the soundtrack of Hamilton. Well, rather, the soundtrack of Hamilton happens to directly quote excerpts of George Washington's resignation speech, technically, uh, but to be honest, I could probably quote you more lines from the musical Hamilton than I could quote you passages written by our first president, or probably any president, but that's, that is neither here nor there. So t today we are taking a look at a piece of Jesus's farewell discourse, uh, a long goodbye, perhaps a kind of resignation speech that Jesus gives to his friends before he's crucified. His friends didn't quite understand it then, but Jesus promised to them that he was going to prepare a place for them. Because in God's house, there are many dwelling places, as our Bible translates the verse. Although George Washington's Bible read, in my father's house, there are many mansions. So in Washington's resignation speech, a more modern farewell discourse, he said he hoped that after 45 years of my life, dedicated to its service with an upright zeal, the faults of incompetent abilities will be consigned to oblivion, as myself must soon be to the mansions of rest. To entrust oneself to the mansions of rest is a lovely way to frame and to accept the inevitability of death even though Washington's resignation was met with shock and confusion, much like how Jesus was met with shock and confusion every time he tried to tell his friends what would happen. But long before George Washington retired, Jesus himself taught us how to say goodbye. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the book of John, uh, chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Hear now the word of the Lord. From hard to turn pages. Okay. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thomas 
Francis is really good at asking questions, more so than he usually gets credit for. After all, Jesus says he's leaving, but that it shouldn't be a problem for us to meet up with him there. But it's hard to get somewhere if you don't know where the destination is. Even GPS can't help you with that. Jesus kind of answers Thomas's question, but he also kind of doesn't. He doesn't say, well, see, I'm not talking about going to a place on a map. This is another one of my metaphor things. Instead, he says, you want to know the way? Dude, I am the way. So Philip steps in with a different approach. He says, okay, Jesus, look, just, just give us this one thing and we would be satisfied. Just show us the Father and that would be enough. Just this one thing. We love you, Jesus, and we followed you this whole time and we would die for you. But there's still this one thing, this, this one concept that we're holding on to because we understand what it means to see someone. And we understand what it means to be in a specific location. But we don't understand what you're asking us to do. Give us something to hold on to. When I was 17, I did light design for a play at my high school. The father of the main character had dementia and was failing. But there is a scene in the second act when she goes to see him in the hospital, and he's perfectly lucid. He's not talking about aliens anymore or things that make no sense at all. He's the father that she remembers having. Throughout the whole play, he's asked her for things that she can't give him, but now he just asks for a milkshake. So she runs out and gets him the one thing that he wants, but when she comes back on stage, the nurse tells her that he's gone. But, but I, I brought the milkshakes, she says. That line made me cry every night. It's easier to fixate on that one thing that maybe might make everything right again, even just for a moment. The one thing that you can do. All he wanted was a milkshake. To narrow in on the one small thing that would transport you back to whatever normal even means anymore. A lot of people are zeroed in on haircuts these days. To grasp at straws, the vitamins you hope would work miracles, the one phone call that might resolve the issue, the one question you want answered. But it's like having a dream that you're falling, 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 and suddenly you wake up and you're clutching handfuls of your sheets in your hands like they could have saved you. And we just want to be back in the sanctuary, <laughs> hugging hymnals to our chest, adjusting our ties, putting on lipstick that won't be smudged off like by a mask, like that would make everything okay. It wouldn't. There would still be a pandemic and more than a quarter of a million people dead around the world, and shortages of necessary supplies to fight against a disease that is contagious before a person starts to show symptoms. No milkshake or haircut or church service is going to change any of that. Rationally, we know it wouldn't. Still, we wish that it could be that easy. Because we may think of our lovely sanctuaries as God's home, 
the places where the Holy Spirit lives. But they aren't. The church is not the dwelling place of God where Jesus is going, the place that has many rooms, rooms that Jesus is preparing for us. We are not being called to follow Jesus to a physical location. He's using location as a metaphor. It was never about a single place. It wasn't about the temple in Jerusalem. It wasn't about Sinai, the mountain of God. God was in those places, but God has always been in every place. There is nowhere that God isn't. There is no place you could go where Jesus would not find you. It is our love for each other and our commitment to our community that is connecting our rooms right now, like a telephone line that runs down the hallways of God's dwelling place. We are following Jesus right now, without so much as opening the door to go outside. It's not what we ever thought the house of the Lord would look like. But Jesus doesn't work in easy, literal, straightforward, follow the GPS ways. He is showing us God not by bringing another person to the table, but by inviting us to share our lives with Jesus, because that is the way. Love is the way. Please pray with me. As we pray together, I encourage you to add your own prayers either out loud at home in your heart where God will always hear you or typed into the comments of this video where we can read them and pray together in real time. Lord, we are here. Perhaps not unlike Jesus's first disciples, we come to you a little fearful, scattered, grateful for our encounters with the risen Christ, but troubled and unsure what to do next. As we continue to worship in our separate spaces, we long to be together, gathered in your home, brought to the places you prepare for us. In our anxiety over the duration of this pandemic and in our worries about the many and long ramifications of this trying time, we want desperately to believe in you and believe in Jesus. We pray for an outpouring of your spirit. Send the comforter, our advocate, to show us the way, to remind us of the truth and to grant us abundant life. Lord, we have questions. We know there are lessons we should know well, but cannot seem to recall. We feel upended by so much change and so little control. We confess that there are commandments of Jesus we remember, but struggle to keep. We need to be honest about our misgivings and doubts. Confident that you will love us to the end, and despite our failings, we share with you all that troubles our hearts. We are troubled by the mounting deaths caused by COVID-19. Over 79,000 in our own country alone so far.
We are troubled by the growing numbers of lost jobs and economic turmoil. We are troubled by our inability to be close to the ones we love when they need us the most. We are troubled by children missing out on their education, those who wonder when they will next eat, those with no place to find shelter. We are troubled by the people wrestling with addiction, those suffering from mental illness, and those languishing in loneliness. We are troubled by pain within and without, the violence inflicted on the innocent, the cruelty perpetrated on the vulnerable, the scarcity that belies your generosity and abundance. Lord, we come to you, aching to be given a place to rest and a space to set our burdens down. We come to you because we believe in you, your grace, your mercy, your compassion, and your power. You promise us spaces of rest, inexplicable peace, joy not dependent upon our circumstances. In you we find our home, you set us free to do your work in this world. Grant us the courage to name how we feel, to lament what we see, and then turn us toward the people who need their hearts put at ease. Make of us living stones who create buildings of relief, shelters of compassion, tabernacles of mercy. Lord, we boldly ask to follow you so closely that others will come to know you and believe in you through our work and our witness. May our faithful discipleship ease our troubled hearts and perpetuate the love of the one in whose name we pray, our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. Sing praise to God who reigns above, the God of all creation, the God of power, the God of love, the God of our salvation. Sing. 
Into the hands of God, we commit our spirits and ourselves. All we have comes from the one who made heaven and earth. In gratitude for all the blessings of this life, we offer with joy God's tithes and our offerings. If you are able to, please consider mailing your offerings to the church, 210 Smith Street, Alternatively, if you visit peoplespresbyterian.org, you'll find a donut, donate button at the top of the page that will link you directly to a secure page where you could make a one-time donation. We appreciate your generosity as we seek to continue our mission and ministry throughout the community during this difficult time. Let us pray. Lord, out of love, you prepare a place for us, not only in heaven, but on earth. We are never outside of your care or left to fend for ourselves. You are the way, the truth, and the life that eases the troubles of our hearts. Take these gifts, bless and use them to create places of refuge for those most in need of your peace and rest. May these offerings build spaces of love and grace here and now, so that all can celebrate together in our Father's house. Amen. Please join with me in reading uh, the old version of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Yes, I did say donut instead of donate. Thanks for catching that, Bill. <laughs> As we go into the uncertainty of another week of isolation, I urge and invite you to find ways to interact with your friends, neighbors, and families. Pick up your phone and call someone you haven't spoken to in a while, or who lives alone, or who is grieving. Join me for virtual coffee hour after we close our time together here on this live stream. At the very, very beginning, God said, It is not good for the human to be alone. Human, it is not good for you to be alone. Find ways to live in community, even from six feet apart or farther. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you 
and be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. Trust that Jesus is leading us home to the house of the Lord, where we will dwell forever. God has seen us through uncertain times before, and God will see us through again. From wherever you are, serve the Lord, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit.